Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we're drinking Pliskin's One-Eyed Pilsner. <laughs> nice. American Pilsner. <laughs> Fitting beer for the movie we're going to bring to you today, it's 1986's Nomads. You can see I grew my hair out for today's episode. <laughs> Miraculous! Ah, I'll make a fortune off of this. <laughs> this movie was directed by John McTiernan, Hollywood heavy hitter here. Directed movies like Die Hard, Predator, Last Action Hero, the list goes on. Hunt for Red October, I think, Man, too. Yeah. yeah, huge blockbuster movies. I always remember that Hunt for Red October video game, or that on in NES. It was all super boring and shitty. <laughs> Aren't you that a sub? Oh, boring and shitty. This movie stars Pierce Brosnan, of all people. It was his first starring role in a movie. Yeah. We don't really need to say what he's done. He's fucking James Bond. Remington Steel. He was in Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He got hit with the run by fruiting. <laughs> And he's Dante's Peak. <laughs> Dante's Prick. <laughs> <laughs> this movie also stars Leslie Ann Down, and she's in one of our favorite comedies of all time, The Pink Panther Strikes Again. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you see the full effect with the helm. The helm. <laughs> Anna Marie Monticelli is in this, as well as the rock star Adam Ant. <laughs> That's right, yeah. So the movie starts off with one of the main characters, Eileen, and she wakes up from a dream, and she's in the hospital, and she's getting ready to do marathon 36-hour shift. <laughs> yeah. Typical doctor shift. <laughs> yeah. There's this guy that they brought in who's strapped down, and he's hysterical, and he's like babbling phrases in French sort of take a shine to Eileen and he calms down before he has one final outburst. <laughs> Rah! He grabs her. He's dead. One of the doctors finds out that his name is Jean and he's a French anthropologist. He studies nomadic tribes from different countries. Eileen starts seeing visions. Turns out to be Jean's life through his eyes. These visions start to affect her so much that she ends up running away, like leaving everything behind, her job, her apartment, and she's nowhere to be found. Through the visions that Eileen's having, we learned that Jean and his wife have recently moved into this house in the city. There's this van parked outside and he notices outside on the garage that they vandalize the outside of the door. He opens up the garage door to park the car in and he sees that there's this shrine that these people have created, these punks in this van. It turns out that a murder happened in the house. These people that are always driving by, they're worshipping this house because of the murder that happened. Jean becomes very interested in these punks in this van and he decides to follow them one night. He goes on some huge quest like this, <laughs> following these punks, and he comes upon them as they're killing somebody with a knife, calls out to them, and they start chasing him, and he's lucky enough to get away from them and hide underneath a vehicle. He gets out from underneath the car, and he kind of follows them again, which is sort of stupid. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> fuck, man, you already got away once. Don't push it. And he starts taking pictures of them, and they let him. They're actually okay with this. One of the punk girls stands on a car and starts <laughs> doing some <laughs> 80s dance and everything. Jean comes home, and his wife is fucking pissed because he's been missing for like 30 some odd hours he's all disheveled and full of dirt and beat up yeah. and everything yeah, it's like, like she's like where the hell were you they're nomads like the people I study, they are nomads. He starts developing this film that he had taken while well, he's all smoking, smoking these chemicals <laughs> she looks and there's none of these people in any of the photos he took. Yeah. And, and he, he knew they were there. He took like hundreds yeah. of photos. And they're, they're not in one of them. What the hell is going on? He's even more invested in finding out what's going on with these people now. Yeah. Eileen's friend who's trying to find her, who curses like a sailor by the way, I love <laughs> she's always swearing, goes to her apartment and the phone rings and she answers it and it's a friend of Eileen's and we find out that Eileen tried contacting him to find out what this phrase was that Jean kept repeating in the hospital and he tells her friend it's actually an Inuit term, Inuwak, which is a term for these nomadic spirits that like to cause a lot of trouble and they're drawn to 
places of calamity where these disasters and bad things have happened. These spirits actually can assume human form, and if anyone gets close to them, their lives become these disasters as well. John is going more crazy, and he actually sees one of the punks outside of his house. It's Adam Ant, actually. <laughs> yeah. And he goes out with his fucking tire iron and kills him. He beats him to death and just gets naked and goes to bed. <laughs> <laughs> he wakes up the next morning and looks out the window, and while well, there's no corpse or anything, Eileen wakes up. And she's in Jean's house. His wife is there. And his wife kind of took her in, came to the house and needed help. They look out the window and they see all these nomadic punks start to surround the house on motorcycles. And that's where we're going to end the plot. So if you want to see how Nomads ends, watch the movie. One of the best things about this movie is that... There's nothing like it. Nothing like it at all. The story is pretty damn original. And it's super stylistic. It yeah. has its own feel and its own look. Yeah, so like the story is original, the look is original. This movie is just basically like stands on its own as something completely different than most other movies at the time. And the way it's structured too, the way the, the movie is edited, the way the, the flashbacks and the story plays out, the way it's, everything's pieced together, and the way you learn about the characters is different as well. Edited to be confusing, mm -hmm. on purpose, to make you confused, to make you question what's happening. It seems like it wouldn't work, right? Yeah. But it does. Visually, this movie is super cool. It's just got a really cool look to it. The colors, mm -hmm. the lighting. I love the way the movie is lit, because it's lit to look very natural. The lights are coming from a natural source. At the same time, it's stylistic. That's not easy to pull off without just looking boring. It's stylistic in an 80s way, right? They use sort of the idea of the punks as the nomads, these bad spirits, right? Yeah. Which at the time, you know, punks were looked at as sort of ruffians, not, yeah. you know, the lower dregs of society. And also being kind of nomadic. The music in this movie is fucking fantastic. Again, it's super 80s music. <laughs> yeah. There's always this kind of super metal music that the punks are listening to, which is funny because it should be punk rock music, but it's not. It's more, <laughs> it's more like metal music. If you hear that music, you know they're close. Like, if you hear faintly, like, ah, oh, They're coming. They're coming. They're close, right? That musical cue is neat. The music also changes a lot throughout the movie, so you have that metal music. Then you have, like, more of kind of this atmospheric kind of synthy stuff happening. And then, like, more some more classical piano stuff. So there's lots of different types of music but they all have their own place in the yeah, movie, yeah. where it fits yeah. properly. The, it, the music draws out how you feel about yeah. certain scenes too, right? Yeah. And the characters and everything. It's perfect. It's yeah. exactly what music is supposed to do. There's no special effects in this movie, besides the camera work and the editing. A lot of really cool camera work in this. There's actually a couple of things we can nitpick about this movie. And the first thing that kind of stood out to me was <laughs> Pierce Brosnan's <laughs> shitty French accent. <laughs> it's so put on. It sticks out like a sore thumb in this movie. Yeah. It's like, what? Him being French <laughs> added nothing yeah. to the movie. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Just keep your regular accent. Keep your regular Irish accent or whatever. Yeah. It's still foreign. Good enough. He could have been American for Christ's yeah. sake. What's the difference? Yeah. I also thought that Leslie Ann Down was not so great in this when she had to kind of go over the top and like be really dramatic mm. it kind of felt too put on kind of like Pierce Brosnan's French accent right a little too much <laughs> like okay I don't really believe it now mm. you know you now you're going too far dial it back a bit I thought it was a little kind of overkill when she was all hysterical I, was like, yeah, right. I don't I don't really buy it <laughs> right yeah that being said though I think the movie is strong enough to where all that stuff is easily overlooked, though. The movie is interesting and cool enough to get past all that. Exactly, yeah. The one thing that may get you for this movie is the ending, because it's extremely enigmatic. You're sort of left with more questions than answers, right? But I do think that it takes two watches to really f fully get what's going on. The ending is kind of anticlimactic. It's like, okay, Sure, it's over, I guess. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. you're not really left with yeah. answers, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. The second time that I watched it, everything clicked for me after. I was like, okay, yeah, that, all right, 
this is why he's doing this, and you start to put everything together. Right? One thing about this movie, maybe it's a downfall, but maybe it's a cool thing too, is it all really depends on that phone conversation that her friend has with that guy from the university. Yeah. If you get distracted and you're not listening to the whole thing, you're kind of fucked, because that yeah. explains everything. Yeah. And even the way that they pace that part out where they get interrupted a bit. So he's talking a bit and she's like, oh, hold on, and something else happens. So there is interruptions during that conversation that throw you off. I kind of like that, though. I kind of like the fact that they interrupt that scene. Yeah. Because you, you sort of think that it maybe shouldn't be interrupted, right? Because it's so important. But then it does keep getting interrupted, so... It's more realistic. Yeah, it's, it's more realistic, but it also makes you watch it more intently. Another cool thing about this movie is that Arnold Schwarzenegger saw it and liked it so much that he hired the same director to do Predator. <laughs> yeah, which is funny because you'd never really know. They're two completely different movies. <laughs> yeah. Stylistically, thematically, they're like miles apart. Yeah, so if you want a stylistic, visually impressive 80s movie which doesn't overdo the 80s but puts you in the 80s, in the 80s, <laughs> yeah. and makes you think, then check out 1986's Nomads. You certainly won't be disappointed. Yeah, and it's hard to kind of categorize this movie. Is is it not? It's not quite horror, but it's not <laughs> quite suspense or thriller. It's not really action. Yeah, it's got kind of. It's, it's its own thing. It's got kind of themes of almost yeah. everything, right? Yeah. yeah. And until next time, keep drinking and growing your hair out. <laughs>